Derek. JB. We're back again. We are back again. Power to Mind Academy, folks. Power to Mind, great to see you. Great likewise, to see you. likewise. And of course, here we have again our communication expert, our neuro linguistic guru, Derek Borswick. Good afternoon. Derek. Lovely day. You have a brain. Do I? I believe I do too. <laughs> but they're not all the same. They're not all the same, JB. And so, what I was trying to understand is. If your brain's slightly different, my brain's slightly different, does that mean we process information differently? We do process information dif differently, JB. In fact, you may well have heard, remember the film actually, The Man With Two Brains with Steve Martin. Vaguely, I was a very small boy at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I do love it. I do love it, how creative. <laughs> well, we actually have three brains, JB. So we have the reptilian part of the brain, which is responsible for the fight or flight response. We then also have the mammalian part of the brain, or the limbic part of the brain, and this is responsible for emotions. Okay. And then we have the neocortex, which is responsible for the higher thinking or critical thought. And as over the years we will have seen some people have this more developed than others. So that's one, two, three different brains. We have got three different brains indeed. Um, and can you give us an example of how we process things differently through those brains? Yeah, sure. Well, I'm drawing on material here from Paul McLean going back to the 60s under the Tryon model, which is a great metaphorical model. I know there's been some research around that that says it's more complicated. Of course it is, but it serves as a good model. And also from David Eagleman's research material. So the brain, in essence, what we have is we construct a model of the world, and that model is constantly being refined. So what we, we're not always seeing everything in uptime, and in fact, our conscious mind is the last bit of the brain to actually realize what's going on. It's okay. about six seconds behind. Now what happens is when you enter a, when the model changes and there could be something of interest or a threat, then there is something tripped in the brain called the amygdala. So I quite like to call it tripping the amygdala. And that's where there's somebody new, let's use an example, you're walking down the street in the morning and the only person you will remember is the very attractive person, we don't want to go there, or the person who's dressed very unusually. So let's say they're wearing, for sake of argument, a pirate outfit, something that's unusual that you, would, you wouldn't expect to see in the centre of Edinburgh on a Monday morning. So at that moment, the model has changed, so the, tr the switch is flipped and you have to process the information. You need to work out, is that person a threat? Do you want to eat them? Do you want to mate with them? Or do you want to fight with them? Now, interestingly, that part of the brain is also responsible for processing information. So at that point, the brain is working out, is the information I'm being presented with complicated? And is it interesting and exciting enough for me to then pass it up the brain? So going back to our example, walking down the street, you see the person dressed unusually in the pirate outfit. Then you have an emotion. You may be jealous. You may always want to be a pirate, JB. You may actually think, get angry. Why is somebody dressed like that? You may be envious, there may be a number, you may be happy, you may start laughing. There's a number of emotions. And then you have that moment as you walk down the street where you go, this is really odd. Why would somebody be wearing a pirate outfit at nine o'clock on a Monday morning in the centre of Edinburgh? And you try and work it out. Stag party. <laughs> Probably the right response, JP. <laughs> Probably the right response. So what do we do in business? Well, we tend to do the reverse of this and we tend to try and logic people into a decision using our critical brain to then get a good emotion about it, a feel good feeling and then latterly we hope that we are not perceived as a threat. So we are working on the inverse to the way the brain actually processes information. Okay. Now of course in, in those uh, critical and important meetings hopefully you're not going to come across a pirate. <laughs> you never know JB, I did try that once, it didn't go down too well. But thinking about those different types of brain, what are the sort of common mistakes people might make? How does that then, how can you apply those different brains to the meeting situation? Yeah, well, what we want to do is we need to pique somebody's interest. Now, there's a number of ways you can do this. I like to call this a hook, and I elaborate more on this in the Power to Mind Pirate Academy. Pirate theme again. Well, you could have a pirate if you wanted to. You may not get the <laughs> right response. But you can pique somebody's interest. You can use a story, for example. We're actually hardwired to listen to stories, and people are interested. As soon as you hear Once Upon a Time, you're immediately, your attention is focused. The other thing you can use is an interesting statistic or a shocking statistic. You can shock people. I wouldn't suggest giving them a fright, but by giving them information they may not have been aware of before, that tends to pique their interest. And there's a number of other ways you can do this as well, but these are some of the, the things that you can look to do in a meeting. Great stuff as always, Derek. So this is the uh, ongoing videos for uh, Power to Mind Academy. 
It is. These are just the ones we're putting out on YouTube. I will be recording the full mod modules, which I'm currently doing at the moment, which will cover every single nuance in communication right the way through the spectrum. And these videos we're recording are going out obviously on LinkedIn and they're going out on the, the new YouTube channel, which is the Power to Mind YouTube channel. Fantastic. And people could just find out on YouTube as, as, as a particular address they need to put in any keyboards. Yeah, it's YouTube forward slash C forward slash Power to Mind. So please subscribe to that and you get the videos in advance. And thank you for speaking to me today, JB. Fantastic. That sounds like my motorbike's ready and we'll see you all soon. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thanks for watching.